Varroamite is every beekeeper's nightmare, a familiar enemy to all. We know it spread unstoppably, wiping out colonies year after year, and often we feel powerless against it. But new research might have reached a surprising conclusion. The bees' own behavior could be the weapon against the mite. Could it be that the fall of Varroa is truly approaching? Stay with me, and in this video, well, search for answers to that very question. By now, the Warroa mite has become the greatest threat of beekeeping worldwide. This tiny parasite is present in practically every hive, constantly weakening colonies. It doesn't discriminate it. It feeds on workers and drone brooder-like, draining the bees' fed bodies while spreading deadly viruses. It's no wonder some beekeepers feel that Waroa could mean the very end of beekeeping itself. Over the years, many methods have been created to fight it. The most common weapons are chemical treatments in the form of synthetic compounds. But according to many beekeepers and researchers, these are becoming less and less effective. In many areas, Varroa has developed resistance and residues of the chemicals can be found in both honey and wax. And perhaps most concerning of all, the treatments also weaken the bees themselves. That's why many beekeepers and researchers are asking, is this really the only way? Could it be that the solution doesn't lie in chemicals, but in the bees themselves? More and more researchers believe that bees, through their own behavior, can actually fight back against the mite. And if that's true, then maybe the future won't be about chemical warfare, but about the bees' natural abilities, bringing about the fall of Varroa. For a long time, the first line of defense against Varroa was chemical treatment. Different strips, vaporizers, and uh, compounds appeared on the market, and in the beginning, they worked well to keep mite levels down. But over time, Varroa adapted. In many regions, it has already developed resistance, so the same product that once worked now shows a little effect. But is this really the reality? Stay with me until the end of this video and you'll find out. These treatments don't come without consequences. Their residues can show up in honey and wax. They can directly weaken the bees and over the long term they damage overall colony health. It's like needing to use stronger and stronger weapons every year while the enemy is evolving just as fast, researchers say. Meanwhile, reports of mass bee dies offs are coming in from around the world. Millions of colonies collapsing overnight, often leaving hives completely empty. This isn't just a local issue, it's a global one. Are we even looking for the problem in the right place? Are researchers bringing real solutions? Or are many of these studies misleading beekeepers? That's why the question is becoming more urgent than ever. If the path of chemicals is a dead end, then where is the way out? A research team in Canada at Laval University in Quebec decided to approach the problem from a different angle. Instead of looking for new chemicals, they observed the bees themselves. Their goal was to find out whether certain behaviors or instinctive reaction could help bees keep Varroa mites under control on their own. The central question of the study was this. Which behavioral traits actually contribute to the colony's survival? For example, the bees recognize and remove the infected or dead brood? Can they disrupt the mite's reproductive cycle? Or perhaps dependently uncapped suspicious cells 
to disturb the parasite inside. So, this research wasn't about how we humans can treat bees more effectively, nor about uncovering every causes behind colony losses. It was about how bees might be able to defend their own community. And if those behaviors can be identified, then in the future we could select and breed colonies that are naturally stronger against Varroa. At least, that's what the researchers are hoping for. In my view, this is a total dead end and they're looking for the solution in the wrong place. But let's get back to the study and move forward. The researchers examined several special behaviors that could all help a colony fight Varroa more successfully. The first is hygienic behavior. This means the bees can recognize sick or dead brood and remove it from the cell. The measure these two methods are used. One is the free-skilled brood test, where a small patch of brood is killed with liquid nitrogen, and then they observe how quickly the bees clean it out. The other is the pin test, where cells are punctured with a needle and they watch how long it takes the workers to remove them. This behavior is useful not only against Varroa, but also against other diseases such as American full brood or chalk brood. The second is Varroa sensitive hygiene. Here the bees don't just react to dead brood, they can actually detect when a mite is reproducing inside a cell. They uncap these cells and remove the infected pupa, breaking the mite's reproductive cycle. This is a much more targeted defense strategy, specifically directed at Varroa. The third is the reopening and resealing of cells. Researchers call it recapping, but simply put, it means bees find a couple cell suspicious, uncap it, and then reseal it. This behavior likely disrupts the mite's reproduction, although its effect isn't always consistent. The fourth is mite reproductive failure. This happens when a mite inside the cell, for one reason or another, fails to reproduce successfully. It may be influenced by the bee's behavior or even by signals from the pupa itself. The key point is, the more unsuccessful reproductions occur, the more slowly the mite's population increase inside the hive. These behaviors are fascinating on their own, but what the researchers really wanted to know was how they connect to each other and which one is truly the strongest weapon against Varroa. The study was carried out on 56 colonies in Quebec. These colonies weren't chosen at random. They were the results of several years of selective breeding where hygienic behavior and already been taken into account. This ensured that the research focused on bees that actually had a chance of displaying natural defense mechanisms. The colonies were placed in multiple locations in real world conditions near agricultural areas. This way, the results weren't limited to just one landscape, but reflected how bees behave in different environments. Several tests were performed. The free skilled brood and pin test were used to measure hygienic behavior, how quickly the bees cleaned out dead brood. At the same time, the researchers monitored signs of varroa sensitive hygiene, meaning whether the bees removed mite infested pupae, they also tracked the reopening and resealing of cells and studied in detail how successful mite reproducing was inside kept brood. The ultimate goal was to uncover the relationship between these different behaviors and the actual mite levels in the hive. In other words, 
they didn't just want to observe what the bees were doing. They want to know if those actions really translated into fewer mites in the colony. And the results in many ways turned out to be surprising. During the trials, the researchers clearly saw what not all behaviors were equally effective against Varroa. The strongest links showed up in two areas, the removal or infected brood and the failure of mites to reproduce successfully. In colonies where the bees quickly and consistently removed diseased or mite-infested pupae, the mite population grew much more slowly. The same was true in colonies where a high percentage of mites failed to reproduce inside the cells. By contrast, cell recapping where bees uncap and reseal suspicious brood cells turned out to be weak on its own. Interestingly, in colonies where this happened too often, infestation levels were sometimes even higher. This suggested that recapping may act more as a sign of infection rather than a real defense. Classic hygienic behavior is measured by the free skilled broad or pin test was also useful, but by itself it did not provide meaningful protection. While the bees' cleaning instinct is valuable against many diseases, its simple isn't strong enough alone against Varroa. The biggest takeaway from the study was that there is no silver bullet. No single behavior can solve the Varroa problem on its own. Real strength comes when multiple traits appear together in a colony. The combination of mite reproduction failure, rapid removal or infected brood and general hygienic instincts could provide the kind of resistance that keeps colonies alive without chemicals, or at least slows the growth of mite populations, making treatments more effective and reducing how often they are needed. For beekeepers and breeders, the message is clear. It's not enough to look for just one trait. The real key lies in the combination. The results of this research carry a very clear message for beekeepers. In breeding, it's not enough to focus on a single trait. It's not enough for a colony to quickly clean out dead brood or for bees to occasionally uncap suspicious cells. These behaviors can be useful, but on their own, they don't provide lasting protection against Varroa. Real strength appears only when multiple behaviors are present in the same colony. If bees can both quickly remove infected pupae and consistently disrupt mite reproduction, the overall infestation level can remain low over the long term. This combination is what true resistance looks like. In practice, this means that the future of beekeeping will depend more and more on conscious selection. We must choose colonies that display multiple natural defense traits. By doing this, we can reduce chemical use, raise healthier bees and build a more sustainable beekeeping system for the future. In other words, the future lies in the bee's natural strength, in ongoing selection and in how we, as beekeepers, can recognize and support it. The fight against Varroa has two sides. Research shows that bees are capable for slowing and to some extent managing infestation through their behavior. The two most important traits are the rapid removal of infected brood and the repeated failure of mites to reproduce. These are absolutely worth paying attention to in breeding, but there's another side, practical experience. As beekeepers, we know that bees alone cannot completely overcome the mites. In your family apiary, for example, we've relied on maverick treatments since the mid of 1980s as your main line of defense. The dosage is simple and precise. 2 to 2.5 milliliters of maverick per liter of water using a 2 liter bottle with a 1.5 milliliter hole in the cap.
With two liters of solution, we can treat 20 to 25 colonies. And your experience showed that it is just as effective today as it was when the first start using it. That's why I personally don't believe that mites develop through resistance. If the beekeeper carries out treatment seriously and consistently. The fears around resistance often play into the hands of the pharmaceutical industry. Science this convinces beekeepers to buy six to eight different active ingredients under the impression that without them, their colonies won't survive. In reality, the solution lies somewhere in the middle. Research helps us understand how these natural defense mechanisms work. These are worth observing and supporting because they do strengthen the colony. But at the same time, we should not forget the tried and true treatments that have been working reliably for decades. The two approaches together can provide a stable future, building on the bee's instincts, but completing them with the beekeeper's responsible work. So the final message is simple. Bees can do a lot for themselves, but it's our job to guide them in the right direction. We must not allow ourselves to mislead. Instead, we need to combine your practical experience with scientific insights. This is how we can build strong, healthy, and sustainable beekeeping for the long term. I am Oscar, and this is the Intelligent Real World Beekeeping Journey. Until next time, keep buzzing.